Guess what, guys? The Z6 III has been officially announced, as you've probably heard on the internet. And by the time you're watching this, the news will be out there everywhere. So we're going to talk about the specifications, what the Z6 III is, and all that wonderful stuff. Hot of the press, Z6 III will have a wonderful 24.5 megapixel semi-stacked sensor. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's the question, and that's the question I asked. There is a stack sensor with a very fast readout, and there's a non-stack sensor, which is traditional slow readout sensor, what semi means. And the way it was explained to me is basically, imagine the sensor, and some parts on that sensor would have a semi-stack on it. So those particular areas are going to be much faster. Now, I'm sure Richie is going to have much better explanation than me. So He's been using it for the last six months, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, if, if you think about the DSLR analogy, we had on Nikon DSLRs cross-type odds fox points, which were really fast, and they normally would be in the middle of the viewfinder. And then we had linear points, which wouldn't focus as fast, and they normally would be somewhere, let's say, in the corners of the, you know, viewfinder. So so that's the way kind of I'm thinking about it, but I'm sure Rich is going to tell us. So 24.5 megapixel, what does it mean for us, Becky? It means that we're still not at the point where we have a 30 plus megapixel sensor. I think that we just have to resign ourselves to living with 24.5 megapixels. It's fair to say that some of us were hoping for a higher resolution sensor. It can't be denied. We've talked about it for years at this stage where we want something a little bit more. But I do understand that the Z6 market has always been traditionally a 24 megapixel ish sensor market. So we have a newly, a new sensor. Which is 24.5 megapixels. My dreams were crushed again and again. I am stuck in 24.5 megapixel hell. But what we've got with that resolution is probably a very good low light performance. Obviously, we we're going to test on that. Well, minus 10 EV auto focus and very, very fast frame rate. So it's up to 120 frames per second in stills mode. So that's on full frame. And apparently 240 frames per second in video modes. I assume that's in the DX, but you will see probably the real specifications on the screen at some point. Eight stops of VR, similar to Nikon ZF. We're going to get focus point VR, which again, something that very new and came with Nikon ZF. So it doesn't matter which focusing point you use, even if it's in the corner, the sensor will stabilize the image for that particular corner, which is really, really good for video use. Let's talk about the body briefly. So it does have a fully weather sealed body, which means that it's a bit more robust than the previous generations of Z6, and it will go down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. It also has a very angled display, much like the Z8 and the Z9. So if you're looking for a screen that will allow you to shoot nicely in portrait mode, as well as in landscape, then personally, I prefer the Z8, Z9, version over, let's say, the ZF and even the Z6 and Z7 version. Now, the body itself is actually bigger. We are now kind of sitting in between of traditional Z6 and Z7 line, which is small and compact, bigger than that, but then smaller than Nikon Z8. So it's kind of sits somewhere in the middle, but that's what brings the robustness and weather scene into the body. I personally will take that body over traditional Z6, Z7, because you know the case of Hengen Pinky that we talked about for years. I think it's finally will be cured with this body. Excellent. The hanging pinky has been resolved. It does also come with a newly announced MBN 14. So yet another battery grip. This one has two batteries inside the grip. So take the battery out of the camera, put the grip in a little bit like the old style. Um, and that's supposed to be announced around the same time or released, should I say, at the same time as the camera itself. Well, the good news as well, it doubles up as a charger. So it's got a USB port. You can just charge those both batteries inside the battery pack itself. And yes, as you mentioned, it's a bit old school, similar to D200 style, where actually the bit of the grip goes inside the battery chamber of the camera, and then two batteries go inside the grip. There you go. Now, the EVF, as we saw in the teaser trailer, is 
brighter, which is actually on par with a Z8, Z9. We've got a lovely 5670K dot EVF and also a 60 frame refresh rate on that EVF, which is going to be great for shooting in challenging lighting. 4000 nits of brightness. Those are good numbers for brightness to have. But also, apparently, a feature that videographers would love is going to have a white color gamut space, which is DCI-P3. Something, something videographers. <laughs> this kind of content we provide on our channel. So now Nikon are incorporating some deep learning technology into their autofocus. We have incredible eye tracking and pro level 3D tracking. So if you have hankered after Z8, Z9 style autofocus performance in a Z6 style body, then this could be the answer for you. Yeah, so I assume that we can expect very similar performance to Z8 and Z9 in this respect. So what deep learning technology does to autofocus? That's a good question to have. I guess we will find out eventually, but you know, you throw in deep learning technology and AI into anything and it sounds a lot better. Now let's talk about frame rate. So again, we got 120 frames per second on 10 megapixels DX in stills mode. We got 60 frames per second and 24 megapixels full frame mode. And that is all with auto focus and auto exposure tracking. So those are pretty good numbers, actually, if you think about it. And as we mentioned before, you do have that lovely eight stop VR, which is actually very, very helpful when it comes to auto-focusing with long telephoto lenses at great distances. That will be with any lens that is compatible with Synchro VR. So now you've got a Synchro VR body with nice long lenses at eight stops. All righty. Well, the camera will take CF Express card as well as XQD, which would go in the same slot, but there's also standard SD slot included. So a little bit better than Nikon ZF that comes with a micro SD, MSD card, you know, so at least you're gonna can you can get really fast CF Express cards and you can have SD card as a backup. So pretty good basically on Z8 level on that. Let's talk about video a little bit. Looking at the specs of this camera, it does appear to be specifically geared towards videographers, I would say, just because you've got, for example, 12-bit RAW and N-Log recording, you do have uh, ProRes, and also it's got extra features like, okay, we've got 4K as we expected, we've also got 6K in RAW, in-camera recording, so you don't need an extra hard drive or anything for that, you can do that in camera. So it also has the ability to record in at 240 frames per second in slow-mo, which can then be slowed down even further by 10 times, which if you love your slow-mos, who is it that does a lot of slow-mos? Is it um, James Gunn? Who's the director that does a lot of Michael Bay? Well, James Gunn, yeah, definitely the yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, we yeah. should really use slow-mo as well because when I have my coffee and I talk too fast, you know, that's a good way to slow me down. Exactly. So if you're one of those directors or an aspiring future James Gunn, then absolutely. This is, this is your product, I would say. Absolutely. Well, let me throw in some things at you as well. We've got 6K at 60 frames in row, which is nice. So that's fast. That's a lot of data. Think about this. There's also 5.4K in YUV color space. All right. So go wow. Google that. Now, if you don't like NRAW, and apparently NRAW is only available in Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve software, you can also record in ProRes, which a lot more people know how to use. And it's definitely, if you are shooting a footage for someone and you need to deliver files to editor, then ProRes is going to be quite useful. Another video feature is that you now have timestamps available for you. So if you, you are using Ninja devices for timestamps or other ones, you will be able to sync this camera with all other cameras as well. So that's is useful for people who use multi-camera setup. Now let's talk a little bit about the release date and the kit. So obviously you can buy the camera by itself, body only, at the price that you will see somewhere on the screen. You will also be able to purchase a 2470 f4 kit, a standard 2470 f4, but also 24 to 120 f4 kit, which is, I think, a little bit more desirable because 24 to 120 lens is extremely good. Now the Cameras are expected to arrive sometime next week and Nikon is expecting to have good stock of those. So for people who are ready to pre-order, definitely get in touch with Grace or your local dealer and put your pre-order ASAP.
We're very excited to actually put this camera in our hands. Believe me, when we have one, we will definitely be doing a review or five of it and all the various different features. So expect lots of content to come based around the Z6 Mark III. As Con said, it will be shipping out very, very soon. So make sure your name is down and let us know what you think in the comments below. Is this the camera for you? What's your favorite feature? We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching. Give this video a like and subscribe and all the love you can share on the internet. Yay. We're signing off. We'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha